Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship at Hyde Park Union Church. We are so glad that you have joined us this morning. Know that you are in God's presence here, and you are welcome, just as you are. Today is a Youth Sunday, which means that youth will be leading all elements of worship today. 
We will hear God's message through music, scripture, prayer, and spoken word this morning. We invite you to open your heart to the Holy Spirit as it moves throughout our service. We will now hear our opening prayer from Leah Charles. Dear God, let us think about what makes us who we are today. Let us reminisce on who brought us here and how we make this earth our own. Lord, today we ask that you give us guidance and ease our anxieties on what is to come in America. We ask that you give us hope and peace so we can calm our minds and reflect on what has happened these coming months. So much has happened since 2020, and we hope that you can lead us into the coming year with positive energy. Amen. Good morning, church. Today's first scripture reading is 1 Samuel 3, verses 1 through 10. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim, so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you caught me. But he said, 
I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Han. And oh my goodness, <laughs> worship just started and I am already feeling just blown away by our young people. And I know I'm not the only one. Thank you, Leah and Jane and Liberty and Tom for your presence thus far. And I'm so excited for all that is to come in this worship service. Good morning, everyone. Good morning from snowy Chicago. I have to give a shout out to our intrepid team that's in the sanctuary this morning, Tom and Bethany and Liz and Jane. Um, I could not make it out of my parking lot. <laughs> so props to you all for being there and giving us a beautiful presence from the sanctuary this morning. Now, typically during worship on Sunday mornings, we have a youth moment, a youth message. And of course, all of worship is for all ages, but it's nice to have a, a specific moment that's set aside for our youth. Well, this morning, I've got an adult moment for you. <laughs> I've got an adult message. So Han read for us this scripture tells us the story of a priest named Eli and a boy named Samuel. And I think that this scripture has much to teach all of us, but there's, I think, a special lesson for those of us who are adult in age, but young at heart this morning. So in this story, we have Eli, who's been the priest for quite some time. He's in his older years. And the boy Samuel, who has been serving Eli along with him in the temple for quite some time. And it's almost kind of like a farce, right? Samuel hears the voice of God, but he doesn't know what he's hearing. He thinks it's Eli. He runs to Eli's room. Eli says, what are you talking about, Samuel? Go back to bed. And they sort of repeat this a few times. You can almost imagine it in a play or something like that. But I think the message of this is so profound, especially given what is stated in that first verse of chapter three. I don't know if you caught it when Han read it. It says, the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. The word of the Lord was rare. There was no frequent vision. So here is this story about a community of people who haven't heard from the Lord in quite some time. They're feeling disconnected from God. And in the midst of that, God calls out to Samuel. God, in the midst of a community that's feeling separated from God, 
that hasn't felt God's presence, God does something new. God calls on a new voice, a new presence in the temple. Now it takes Eli a moment to figure out what's happening. Right? Eli doesn't realize immediately that God is the one calling to Samuel, which is an important message that sometimes, sometimes all of us can miss God's voice, maybe because of our preconceived notions of who God is speaking to, who we're expecting God to call. So thank goodness we worship a God who keeps calling, who isn't afraid to repeat the message. So in this scripture, God repeats the message until Eli recognizes what is happening and Samuel recognizes what is happening and what blossoms is a new ministry. So I think adults, <laughs> there are three important things for us to take away from this scripture this morning. First, God calls young people clearly and repeatedly throughout scripture. And we're a community that knows this, but it's always good for a reminder. God calls young people. Two, the wisdom of elders, our wisdom, is sometimes needed to guide the young people. Samuel doesn't know what's happening and Eli needs to provide a little guidance to say, my son, this is, this is what's happening. God is calling you. Here is how to respond. Eli guides him and then Eli steps back. And three, God is always speaking sometimes in unexpected places, but God is always speaking. And in this scripture, intergenerational ministry is on full display. So this morning, as we listen to our young people lead, let's learn from Eli, right? Let's, let's hear it on the first time around. Let's be listeners and encouragers and advisors when it's necessary and asked for, and cheerleaders and uplifters, uplifters of God's call to our young people. With that in mind, we're now going to see a video essay that was written and recorded by Trinity Bryant. And this essay was written before the inauguration as Trinity was thinking about all that has happened over the past year. And it was actually submitted as part of a contest with the local NAACP for Reverend Martin Luther King Day. So let's listen with open hearts to Trinity's words this morning. I'll be reading the story entitled, What Would Dr. King Do? In March of 2020, COVID-19 was declared a pandemic by the World Health Organization. What followed was a mass confusion and the intrusion of the current administration, spreading lies, where our loved ones died. There was chaos in our streets. There was no toilet paper to reach. Art parks and schools that were once full of giggles and smiles were empty, like a child in exile. As a nation, we were in a great divide. Do we mask up, stay alive? Our federal government in a serious mess. The president playing the game, which state he likes best. While our heroes are dying, 
Our nurses, doctors, and frontline workers are the ones with the capital S on their chest. We can't breathe. No ventilators to be seen. The question on everyone's mind is, what would Dr. King do during this time of historic peril? I can't say for sure what eloquent verbiage he would use, or what message he would choose to bring our nation back to reality. A reality when science rules in a war against this unseen virus. I do know Dr. King will shine a light on this plight of inequality in the fight. Our black and brown brothers and sisters are casualties of this war of healthcare inequality. Even in a time of great despair, Dr. King would not let his nation forget how resilient we are, how brilliant we are, and all our multi-ethnic and multicultural beauty. I can only try to conceptualize the sentiment that Dr. King would bring to this war on our bodies and our humanity. What I do know for sure, Dr. King would not remain silent. He would not fade into the shadows. He would not idly watch. A man's air being restricted by a knee on his neck. Dr. King would not ignore an attack on our Senate floor. Oh, how I wish Dr. King was alive and well to remind our nation. There comes a time when one must take a position that neither safe nor polite, nor popular, but he must take it because conscience tells him this is right. Thank you. Awesome, wonderful. I'm sorry, I couldn't help but unmute. Amazing, thank you. Thank you, Bryant family, amazing. see the hands clapping. I hope the children can see. Amen. God bless you. What a wonderful entry into our prayer time, which I am honored to share with Liberty Bryant. Just a closer walk with thee. My prayer this morning first is that you all are being tremendously blessed by our young people and the hope that they represent. My heart is full. I am so grateful to God for the young people of High Park Union Church. I am compelled to engage them more and more, so stay tuned. 
it only is right that we do so with the amazing gifts that have been shared thus far. As we enter prayer, I do want to first ask that our young people share in the chat um, their prayers. Uh, we often ask for prayer requests, and I can imagine that um, there are times when our young people feel left out, not thought of at this time, but this time is first especially for you that you lift up your cares and concerns to God um, by sharing, if you so desire, in the chat what your prayers are so that as a congregation, we can pray the prayers that our young people have first on their hearts. So I invite the Bryant family, the Barnard family, the Charles family to share with us in the chat your prayers. At this time, scripture comes to mind when Jesus is speaking and, and the disciples want to keep the children from Jesus. And Jesus says, let them come to me and forbid them not for such is the kingdom of heaven. So we invite our young people to share their prayers and then for all to type your prayer requests in the chat and we will lift those up. I see a prayer that the snow continues. Do you know that said to be? Was that Dory? That the snow continues. We hear your prayer. Lord, in your mercy, <laughs> hear our prayers. Another prayer of gratitude from the Bryan household for the snow. Amen. I hear that prayer. I remember days of making snow angels and building igloos, igloos, excuse me, and crawling in them with the snow. So we hear you. There was a day many of us enjoyed the snow, some of us not so much now. But thank you for reminding us of that youthful joy of the snow. Any other prayer requests, adults, feel free to, to type your prayer requests as well. We continue to pray for those in our country impacted by COVID-19 and by the pandemic overall, those who feel isolated and alone, we lift you up to God. Uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. From the Charles household, give us a snow day, Lord. I remember snow days from school. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Prayers for a smoother rollout of the vaccination. Thank you, Anna. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Prayers for Jenny Cook who is planning to return to Hyde Park this Tuesday. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Prayers for Rita's sister, Mary, who is recovering from stent surgery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Prayers for Jennifer's children and stepchildren. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Prayers continue for Liz's brother, um, who continues his treatment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Prayers continued for our city, all that is happening around us in our state and in our country, in our church. There is so much happening, so many good things happening at High Park Union Church. We thank God prayers of gratitude for the blessing of keeping us together and, and uh, granting us growth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I now invite Liberty to lead us in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespassers as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh. 
Luke 2, verses 41 through 52. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why are you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Thank you, Dory. Another story. I hope you hear the similarities between this and the passage earlier from 1 Samuel. And that line of the parents being astonished stood out to me, Dory, as you read that. Who has found themselves astonished so far this morning by the amazing gifts of our young people? I've found myself astonished. Not surprised, I know you all are greatly talented, but I am astonished in the way of receiving your blessings this morning. So we will continue to receive those blessings by hearing a story from Noah. The six blind men in the elephant. A long, a long ago, six men lived in a village in India. Each was born blind. The other villagers loved the old men and kept them away from harm. Since the blind men could not see the world for themselves, they had, they had to imagine many of its wonders. They listened carefully to the stories told by travelers to learn what they could about life outside the village. The men were curious about many of the stories they had heard, but they were most curious about elephants. They were told that elephants could trample forests, carry huge burdens, and frighten young and old with their loud trumpet calls. But they also knew that, Rajas, that the Raja's daughter rode an elephant when she traveled in her father's kingdom. Would the Raja let his daughter get near such a dangerous creature? The old man argued day and night about elephants. An elephant must be a powerful giant, claimed the first blind man. He had heard stories about elephants being used to clear forests and build roads. No, you must be wrong, argued the second blind man. An elephant must be uh, graceful and gentle if a princess has to ride it on its back. You're wrong. I heard that an elephant can pierce a man's heart with its terrible horn, said the third blind man. Please, said the fourth blind man, you are all mistaken. An elephant is nothing more than a large sort of cow. You know how people exaggerate. I am sure that an elephant is a magic, is something magical, said the fifth blind man. That would explain why Raja's daughter can travel safely throughout the kingdom. I don't believe elephants exist at all, declared the sixth blind man. I think we are all victims of a cruel joke. Finally, the villagers grew tired of the arguments and they arranged for the curious men to visit the palace of Raja to learn about elephants. A young boy from their village was selected to guide the men on their journey. The smallest man put his hand on the boy's shoulder. The second blind man put his hand on his friend's shoulder and so on until all six men were ready to walk safely behind the boy who would lead them to Raja's magnificent palace.
When the blind men reached the palace, they were greeted by an old friend from their village who worked as a gardener on the palace grounds. They, their friend led them into the courtyard. There stood an elephant. The blind man stepped toward to touch the creature that was subject of so many arguments. The first blind man reached out and touched the side of the huge animal. An elephant is smooth and solid like a wall, he declared. It must be very powerful. The second man put his hand on the elephant's limber trunk. An elephant is like a giant snake, he announced. The third blind man felt the elephant's pointed tusk. I was right, he decided. This creature is as sharp and deadly as a spear. The fourth blind man touched one of the elephant's four legs. What we have here, he said, is an extremely loud, large cow. The fifth blind man felt the elephant's giant ear. I believe the elephant is like a huge fan, or maybe a magic carpet that can fly over mountains and treetops. The sixth blind man, the sixth blind man gave a tug on elephant's coarse tail. Why, this is nothing than a piece of old rope. Dangerous indeed, he scoffed. The gardener led his friends to the shade of a tree. Sit here and rest for the long journey home, he said. I will bring you some water to drink. While they waited, the six blind men talked about the elephant. The elephant is like a wall, said the first blind man. Surely we can finally agree on that. A wall? The elephant is a giant snake, answered the second blind man. It's a spear, I tell you, insisted the third blind man. I'm certain it's a giant cow, said the fourth blind man. Magic carpet, there's no doubt, said the fifth blind man. Don't you see, pleaded the sixth blind man. Someone used a rope to trick us. Their argument continued. Their shouts got louder and louder. Wall, snakes, spear, cow, carpet, rope. Stop shouting, called a very angry voice. It was Raja, awakened from his nap by the very noisy argument. How can each of you be so certain you are right, asked the ruler. The six blind men considered the question, and then knowing Raja to be a very wise man, man, they decided to say nothing at all. The elephant is a very large animal, said Raja kindly. Each man touched only one part. Perhaps if you put the parts together, you will see the truth. Now let me finish my nap in peace. When the friend returned to the garden with cool water, the six men res rested quietly in the shade, thinking about Raja's advice. He is right, said the first blind man. To learn the truth, we must put all parts together. Let's discuss this on the journey home. The first blind man put his hand on the shoulder of the young boy who would guide them home. The second blind man put a hand on his friend's shoulder and so on until all six men were ready to travel together. The end. Thank you, Noah, for that reminder that each one of us only sees part of things. And that's why I like to be part of a congregation. I think that some of our work as a church is that together, sharing what we know and have experienced of God, we come to a greater understanding of the truth. So thank you, thank you for your wisdom and that story this morning. And now we are headed back to the sanctuary where Jane will lead us. It is now time for our offering. We encourage you to give as you are able. Offering supports all the work we do here at the church, like Bible study, social justice work, and youth ministry. There are three ways that you can give. You can mail a check to the church. You can give on our website at hpuc.org slash give. And you can text give HPUC all caps, one word to 44321. I repeat, you can text give HPUC all caps, one word to 44321. Let us pray. Dear God, please help us be good stewards 
We pray that this offering is used to do good in our community. We pray this offering is used to do good for one another. We ask that you create generous hearts within us. Bless this church. Amen. Okay, now for some announcements. Um, there are several announcements this morning. After worship, there will be a second hour for both adults and youth. Uh, Pastor Veronica will lead the Youth Coffee Hour and moderator uh, Ingrid Wallace and Jana French, sorry, Jana French, will lead a discussion on understanding white supremacy. Stay on Zoom after the service to join one of these breakout rooms. A congregational meeting uh, will be held on Sunday, February 14th, following worship. We will discuss plans for this year, hear an update on church life, and vote for the on the 2021 budget and committee slate. Uh, next Sunday is Communion Sunday, and we will be welcoming three new members of Hyde Park Union Church. Be sure to join for an exciting time of worship. Bible study continues on Thursday nights at six o'clock. The Zoom link can be found online and in the bulletin. Uh, finally, meditation continues on Wednesday nights at six o'clock. Thank you. We will now hear closing music from Bethany Pixens, Tom Gotch, and Ingrid Wallace, day by day from Godspell. Unfortunately, due to the weather today, Ingrid wasn't able to join us. So it's just gonna to be Tom and I. And I could see Ingrid singing along. I was singing along. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of our amazing, talented young people. Thank you to Tom and Jane and Dory, Leia and Noah, Trinity and Liberty and Sean Jr. Thank you so much for this worship service. I typed this in the chat, but my cheeks literally hurt from smiling so much during this worship. Thank you all for blessing us this morning. And now Jane will offer our benediction. May the peace of Christ be with you wherever he may send you. May God guide you through the wilderness and protect you from the storm. May the Holy Spirit bring you home rejoicing at the wonder she has shown you. May God bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Oh. Uh -huh. 